we thank God. We thank God for um, bringing us back. Uh, it's been a very long break. And um, I know some of us are very upset. A lot of people have called to inquire, why are we done? Are we done with it? Uh, we are not yet done. We had to attend to one or two things. But by the grace of God, we are back. And we'll try as much as possible not to go and break again. And I believe that our break will be a break that will send us all to heaven. Amen. Now, we are beginning a very interesting thing. And, and our title for this presentation is World War III. Why, why are you talking about World War III? We are going to understand why we have chosen this topic. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We are so grateful for having given us another privilege to return after a very long break. We have come to you. We seek your grace, your spirit, and your power for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to read to you a quote, a very powerful quote. And afterwards, you will understand why we've chosen World War III as our caption. But first of all, let's read Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Verse 3, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. So we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now we are talking about World War III. Now, very few people believe that the world is going to enter into that stage. The world has experienced World War I, it has experienced World War II, and are we likely to see or experience World War III? And what has it got to do with prophecies and where we are in the stream of time? Now I want to read this quote to you. This is what I, I initially promised, that afterwards you will understand why we have titled this World War III. In the book Maranatha, page 243, and I read, Everything in the world is in an unsettled state. The nations are angry and great preparations for war are being made. Now take note of that. Great preparations for war are being made. Nation is plotting against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The great day of God is hasting greatly. But Although the nations are mastering their forces for war and bloodshed, the command to the angels is still in force. That is based on the text that I, I just read in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. That they hold the four winds until the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. But take note, the nations are mastering their forces for war and bloodshed. Now let's continue. As yet, the four winds are held until the servants of God shall be sealed in their foreheads. Then the powers of earth will marshal their forces for the last great battle. And let's hear this. Just before we enter it, that is the last great battle, into bracket, the time of trouble, we all received the seal of the living God. Then I, let, let's hear it. Then I saw the four angels cease to hold the four winds. And I saw famine, pestilence, and sword. Nation rose against nation, and the whole world was in confusion. So we clearly see that trouble is coming upon the earth. And before this trouble is unleashed, something very significant is going to occur, and that is the ceiling. But the Bible in the spirit of prophecy says the four angels are holding the wings of strife till God's people are sealed. Why? Because great preparation are being made for war. Ladies and gentlemen, why have we titled this World War III? Everything shows that the world is heading towards something catastrophic. It is very interesting to note that long before 
Albert Pike, who happens to be an occult, in his morals and dogma document, predicted three world wars. Now, it's very fascinating. And I want us to go through these three world wars. The first world war. This war was to be battled out so as to enable the Illuminati to overthrow the powers of the Tsars in Russia and turn Russia into a strong fortress of atheistic communism exactly as they planned. That is the state of Russia right now. Now World War II. The Second World War must be fomented. This thing was planned prior to their occurrence. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascist and the political Zionist. This war must be brought about so that Nazism, you remember Nazism? Nazism? Yes. The man in Germany is destroyed and that, that is Adolf Hitler. And that the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. So this was planned before it occurred. Now, the Third World War. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by Argentine of the Illuminati between the political Zionist and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism, that is the state of Israel, the artificial state of Israel, which was created in 1948 by the United Nations, mutually destroy each other. So according to Albert Pike, the third and the final world war has something to do with the Islamic world and Israel. And that is precisely what we are seeing today in Israel and Hamas warfare. Let's watch some scenes. Israel says it's at war after Palestinian militants launched a major terror attack. And while Israel withdrew from Gaza, it continues to occupy the West Bank. This means the Israeli army is the ultimate authority in the West Bank. The 3 million Palestinians there and the 2.3 million in Gaza do not want an Israeli occupation or a blockade. Another point of contention is Jerusalem. It's home to holy sites from three major religions, like the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur or Ramadan. This is a region that's faced tension for years, but these attacks show things could escalate even further. Now, that is not all. This newspaper or magazine called The Economist, back in 2012, predicted this war that we are seeing today back in 2012. That's what the image and the image tells us. So we see Israel somewhere and then we see Hamas. There are so many images that are portraying so many things. But for the emphasis, we will lay our emphasis on the Israel and the Hamas war. Now so it appears the whole world is heading towards a world war. And the question is that how is it occurring and what form is it taking? Now, take note that the spirit of prophecy says the nations are preparing for a great warfare. Now, what is happening in the world? Trump tells us what is going to be the nature of the third world war. This is what they have predicted. I am not saying that it will happen exactly, but this is a prediction that we are also seeing it um, being fulfilled. Now, let's hear Trump, what he has to say about World War III. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I think uh, we've got somebody here in the audience that really wants to ask you a question. Uh, Joe Mitchell's got a question for you. Hi, Joe. Yeah. Hey, Mr. President, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Clearly, it's no secret that our country is in chaos. The world is in chaos. What happened with Yemen and the missile strikes the last few days, Ukraine, Palestine, we don't even know where the Secretary of Defense is right now. Are we on the brink of World War III? I think we're the closest that we've ever been. And, you know, Joe, this won't be a regular war. This is not going to be, as I say, army tanks running back and forth, shooting each other. These are weapons of mass destruction, the likes of which nobody's ever seen. I've seen. I've seen them. 
And uh, this is obliteration. This is not a world war like we are used to. World War I, World War II were terrible, horrible. Uh, this is uh, so much bigger than that. This is, you know, at, like annihilation. And we have people that can't put two sentences together. The, our president can't speak. He can now, this news item tells us America and Iran step closer to the brink of war. So this war began between Israel and Hamas, but we see nations uniting and combining and joining this whole force of war. That is not all. Prior to this, the world also exp has experienced the Russia-Ukraine warfare. And we see this war also escalating. Now let's hear this newspaper from the Sun. It says, or this news item from the Sun, sorry. Axis of evil, Kim Jong-un and Putin vowed to form new world order. Do you hear the word? New world order in chilling warning to West as tyrants ramp up united front against the US. So all these things are brewing and there is fear all over the place as though the world is heading towards a world war. Now in Daily Mail we are told Sweden is warned to brace for war. Civil Defense Minister tells citizens to get moving and prepare for the end of 210 years of peace as country bids to join NATO in face of Russia tension. So there are tensions all over the place. There are tensions all over the place. And it's as though the world is on the brink of a third world war. Now, this news item tells us leaked German military documents warn of World War III with Russia by 2025. Hundreds of thousands of troops deployed in Europe. Now, I'm not seeing it. The news portals are reporting what they foresee. And it's very interesting that we draw our attention to what is going on. In fact, the world sees that something catastrophic, something of a stupendous extreme is about to happen. The world can see. The world can sense that all is not well. Something magnificent. But the Bible says, all are being held in check. Why? Because there is a work to be done. There is a work to be done. And that is why all are being held in check. But it doesn't mean that nothing is happening. Now let's see what some wealthy, well-to-do, rich, big, powerful people in the world are doing. They are preparing for what is to hit this world. That's what this video. Well, mine's a little dark. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. This is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict. Powerful people in the world, you know, they see themselves as utterly incapable of actually creating a future in which everything's going to be okay. A colossal compound on the island of Kauai, complete with a massive doomsday bunker. What is it with billionaires and their doomsday bunkers? But I mean, the question is, what do they know that we don't know? They're prepping for some kind of large-scale disaster. I'm a bit worried about it, to be honest. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, has started to prepare for the doomsday. Is there something that Mark Zuckerberg seems to know that we don't? How many have seen The Last of Us in the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> World's richest people are all buying islands, purchasing huge tracts of lands in places like Hawaii and New Zealand, and having vast sprawling compounds constructed in near secrecy, forcing the builders to sign unprecedented NDAs to keep all the details hidden, and fitting them with blast-proof underground bunkers, all so they can survive a future scenario that they call... The Event. The Event. What Event? Whatever it is, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. 
Right. Well, it's between 600 and 750 days since the event, but that hasn't stopped those of us that survive from enjoying ourselves. Mark Zuckerberg's very worried about it. So worried he spent the last 10 years having a 1,400-acre compound built in Hawaii at a cost of over $270 million, making it one of the most expensive properties in human history, which includes at its heart a 5,000-square-foot underground shelter. And according to locals, there's even talk of Zuck building a vast underground city. The reason? The event. The event. A post-apocalyptic bunker in case of civilization collapse. Okay, then that's normal, isn't it? Hawaii is obviously an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. If there is something that really goes south, how long can you last without supplies? Zuck and his people won't even need to leave the compound to get supplies because it's completely self-sufficient. The property has its own giant water tank and a wide variety of food being grown on site. The construction workers call it Fight Club because if they utter a word about it, they're immediately kicked off the project. And it's being constructed behind a shroud of secrecy usually only seen with secure military installations. And there was no public review process despite the complaints of irate residents. Yeah, the man who built an empire off of sharing your private info is very keen to keep a lid on what he's up to. This six foot tall rock wall along Ko'olau Road in Pila'a has been jokingly compared to the wall Donald Trump wants between the US and Mexico. The wall protects billionaire Mark Zuckerberg's 700 acre estate. Not only does the Facebook founder's personal Xanadu boast blast resistant doors, the door in the underground shelter will be constructed out of metal and filled in with concrete, a style common in bunkers and bomb shelters, just in case Zuck and his family need to quickly vacate the two mansions built directly above it in a hurry. The event. The plans show that the two central mansions will be joined by a tunnel that branches off into a 5,000 square foot underground shelter, featuring living space, a mechanical room and an escape patch that can be accessed via a ladder. When you have that much money, when you're a billionaire, you either go up, you either go up to space, you go find somewhere else to live, or you go down. There are guard towers and cameras everywhere. Eyewitnesses have reported weird, loud noises that sound like gunshots emanating from the site. Suffice to say, whatever Zuck is preparing his family for, it hardly looks like it's going to be something that blows over in a matter of weeks or months. And they want to live forever. And none of us are going to live forever. Yeah. And if you've got too much money, then you can go build a put in five a square cryogenics. And, yeah, yeah, that exactly. you, they they name probably it. already got. Right. But Mark Zuckerberg is by no means the only ultra wealthy elitist busy preparing for the event. The event. There are reportedly over a dozen billionaires that we know of who have been building advanced survival compounds across the globe with completion dates of winter 2024. After the Hawaii wildfires evicted many ordinary people from their homes, the high net worth elite are still moving in. Melaleuca billionaire Frank van der Sloot recently dropped $51 million on 2,000 acres of ranch land. The Hawaiian island of Lanai is now almost completely owned by Oracle billionaire Larry Ellison. And there's now an entire economy created in Hawaii, based solely around the creation of a new surf class to service the mega rich's needs. In Florida, Jeff Bezos spent $147 million buying two mansions on Indian Creek Island, while OpenAI CEO Sam Altman and venture capitalist Peter Thiel have their own little arrangement, where the pair will take a jet to one of Thiel's New Zealand properties in the case of an apocalyptic event. The event. Thiel has been fighting local government for the past two years, trying to build his own 10 bedroom compound directly into the landscape. A doomsday bunker with the bonus of having one of the best views in the world as the rest of the globe burns. So they are building bunkers and preparing what is to happen. But I want to read this quote to you from the pen of inspiration once again. Maranatha P266. Angels are belting the world, refusing Satan his claims of supremacy, made because of the vast multitude of his adherents. We hear not voices. We see not with the natural sight of the work of these angels. But their hands are linked about the world. And with sleepless vigilance, they are keeping the armies of Satan at bay till the sealing of God's people shall be accomplished. So Satan would want to unleash his catastrophe upon the earth. But there is a work, a work to be done. That is the sealing. That is the work of the third angel. Therefore, they have been held in check so that that mighty work will happen. But it doesn't mean that nothing is happening. Now, the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. 
rulers and statesmen and this I, I, I want us to listen very carefully rulers and statesmen men who occupy positions of trust and authority thinking men and women of all classes have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us now listen they are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among nations. What is happening is as if the West and the East are at, at, at are on the brink of a huge catastrophe. It's as if they are going for war. Let's continue. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element. Is it true? The answer is yes, ranging from every single facet of life, in energy, in electricity, in financial sector, in health sector, almost everywhere, there is this huge intensity that is taking possession of everything. Now, and they realize that, now this is where the quote, this is where it is very, very interesting. And they realize that something great and decisive is about to take place that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis even the world out there they can see that something catastrophic is about to hit this earth